Coming up in the next hour, we're going to join, be joined by Ed Peruta. Ed is a uh, not exactly a guy that I would call soft-spoken. He was the plaintiff in the Peruta case in California that was decided by the Ninth Circuit, which, in fact, has just about turned. Uh, if that remains in place, uh, guess what? California becomes a shall-issue state. And that doesn't even talk about what he's doing in Connecticut right now as we speak. Let's flip into the third hour on a Thursday. This is Lock and Load. Buy the Peter Weapon Store. Order go to tacticalwalls.com. That shall not be infringed. Shall not be infringed. Shall not be infringed. Shall not be infringed. On the nation's Second Amendment watchdog, anti gunners, get ready for the pain. The misinformation is over because this is the blunt object. From Gun Owners of America, this is Lock and Load with Bill Frady. Bill Frady. As we roll into the second hour on a Thursday, this is Lock and Load. The number to get in, 1 800 313 9443. I do this show every day, and uh, I work for people that do the same thing every day on a different in a bit in a different venue. And there are lots of us that do these things. And um, while we do work as hard as we can to affect change, often it is the unsung that actually goes to the mat, takes it to the mat, throws everything on the line, and then perseveres. Uh, coming to mind, you might be thinking about Otis McDonald or Art Heller, and joining me from. His home in Connecticut, where he's going to fight till his very last breath, even though he's already causing a whole bunch of consternation among the gun-grabbing community in California across the country, is Ed Peruta. Good morning, sir. Hey, Bill. Glad to be back. Um, since the last time we spoke, I have not heard of anything happening in Connecticut other than the unregistered guy still being unregistered. What's going on with that? Well, um... There are incidents that have not been reported. Um, I'm aware of it because I'm a legal investigator for attorney Rachel Baird, who's a gun lawyer in Connecticut, but I can't talk about clients' names. Right. I'm not going to say that SWAT teams came to the house and went inside and said, you failed to register, we're placing you under arrest, we're dragging you out, we're taking your guns. But there are situations where... Uh, police, I think, going in on a normal routine call of a, of a different topic are aware of the fact that there are firearms in the house and they may be finding, seeing, or whatever firearms that haven't been registered and there's issues. I can't explain it to you, Bill. I understand. Um, uh, yeah, I, is, it, is it fair for me to assume that in some cases those other, other reasons could be possibly manufactured? No, I and I, I think I'm safe in being able to generically give you a scenario. Um, an individual in Connecticut, uh, in in a well after January first, isn't seen for a while. Um, public safety makes entry, finds that the person passed away. Uh, there's firearms in the house. There's a collection of firearms in the house. And um, if one looks at the scenario and says, okay, all of them are in boxes. The man is a collector. He's an investor. Uh, in the 45s with seven and eight round magazines, the magazines are still in the box with the firearm. Right. In the handguns where there's 15 round magazines, the magazines are out and piled up as if they're going to be counted and registered. <laughs> this is after the police find it. Well, or, yeah. I mean, they can't, this was they, from they, the they, homeowner, they, the fictitious home, homeowner. No, this is from the deceased homeowner. Okay. No family in the house with them. Uh, and the state gets involved. And, um, you know, now what do you do? Well, the estate wants the firearms, and the state says no. And there's, there's, I, I can't go on, I can't tell you any more about it, but I think that, to be very honest, uh, with the number of firearms involved, the, the guy probably had a heart attack uh, 
trying to get together all the paperwork and doing what the state mandated them to do by January 1st. But that's neither here nor there. There are other situations um, where people have been charged. I mean, not in our office, but there's been news reports of an individual shoots a squirrel, the cops come, he's got an unregistered, uh, quote-unquote, prohibited firearm, registerable firearm. Um, a person comes into the office with, and there's two different types of restrictions. There's the named firearms and there's the feature firearms. If you have uh, two or more features or one or more features, the firearm had to be registered. <laughs> and the person says, well, I didn't register my firearm. What do I do? And it had one feature bill, the pistol grip on the AR. That was the one feature. I said, unscrew the pistol grip, take it off the firearm, uh, give it to someone where you have no control of it, and it's no longer a prohibited firearm. Now, is that going to hold up? I don't know. But, you know, there's, there's all kinds of creativity going on <laughs> with people. <laughs> yeah, in other words, if you've got an AR, if you've got an AR uh, platform, that doesn't have a bayonet lug, doesn't have a flash suppressor, doesn't have, uh, you know, it's not blah, 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 blah. Just take the pistol grip off it. And yeah, you Black can't Wing Ordinance is, is making a whole lot of guns to uh, keep people out of, from going to school. There, there are people, but but I, I you know, um, I, I need to say something again before we get going, because I know you do segments. Um, Rachel Baird, attorney Rachel Baird and myself, um have gotten permission from Cox Communications uh, to do a live telephone call-in program in central Connecticut. Um, I think I may have sent you uh, something on that this morning. Um, if you did, I haven't looked at it just not, yet. Not, not Bill. Bill. SJTalkShow.com. The website is up there, and what we're calling the show is Summary judgment. Um, we went through some legal terms and figured out what's the best phrase to use to, to identify the show. And we are going to be talking about and breaking news about uh, a host of issues, including firearms issues. But I need to say something to all of your listeners. I sent in to Gun Owners of America today my 20 plus an extra 80, and I joined. Well, Ed, um, thank you so much. <laughs> well, no, I had told Larry. I was talking to Larry. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I told him I was going to, and then all of a sudden I remembered it. Now, I will tell you that Rachel and I made the 14, 15-hour drive out to Indianapolis and back. We went to the NRA convention. Um, I was very well received there. Um, we went to the law seminar. We got some very good books, um, and I just have to tell you, because I'm going to be doing some reading, uh, Stephen Halbrook has published the book, uh, Gun Control in the Third Reich, Disarming the Jews and Enemies of the State, uh, that I'm going to spend some time reading, and I figured that I would give him a plug. Um, I was pleasantly surprised uh, to find out that the cover of the May issue of, of First Freedom had the story of California on it by uh, David Koppel. Um, but I'm really here in Connecticut. I mean, Sunday morning I jump on a plane and I'm going out to California, so I'm going to be in San Diego um, dealing with what I have to deal with out there. There's nothing breaking or new or whatever. I know that the Supreme Court's waiting to take up the, the Drake case, but here in Connecticut... Here's what's happened, and there are three key dates that you have. Well, there's really four, but I'm not going to talk about the fourth one. Um, Post Newtown was April 4th, 2013, when the governor signed the legislation. Um, January 1st, uh, 2014, um, when, you know, everything kind of kicked off and went into effect, you had to register. And April 1st, where you had to start doing transactions on long guns. 
Now, in Connecticut and across the country, based on before, what I've Before seen, you start on that, we're coming up on the break, so if you can hang on okay. to that. You All hang right, on well, to that. You can find, if you if you want to contribute to the cause, check out Connecticut Carry. All you're doing is adding more rounds to Mr. Peruta's gun when you do that. We'll be right back on a Thursday. This is Lock and Load. And welcome back on a Thursday. This is Lock and Load. The number to get in, 1-800-313-9443. One of the lessons I took in the military during all of the fun training you do before you actually become permanent party is you will succeed if you don't give up. And a lot of times people give up in life in general. My next guest, or my guest, is, is not one of those people that gave up. Uh, he, uh, With the decision that came from now from the Ninth Circuit in California, he actually sort of stood. Uh, everybody in the freedom-loving world sort of looked at that and said, Wow! And he was the uh, genesis behind it. Joining me again from Connecticut is Ed Peruta. We, we were talking, and I am a di- and I am a director of Connecticut Carry. Yes, uh, you know, and it is a five hundred one C three four whatever the hell they're called C four nonprofit. <laughs> uh, you know, that's 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 above my pay grade with Rich Burgess. You're just a 501 guy. That's what you guys are, 501Cs, well, which means you can me, take me, char- charitable donations. Yes. I I need I need to say something. I'd like to thank Larry Pratt for having me on Gun Owners of America. I'd like to thank you, obviously. Um, Megan Kelly's show gave me three gave me and Scott Wilson from CCDL three and a half minutes, which I knew wasn't enough time. Um, the NPR and Connecticut Public Television did a, like, town meeting get-together, like, two weeks after Newtown, and I told the people that were putting it on, it's too soon after Newtown, and it is too short a period of time to get into the issues. And um, all I can tell you is this. Summary Judgment, the show that's going to be on, and it's going to stream across the country on the Internet, live, real-time, People are going to be able to call in and and vent or ask questions, but it is a joint venture between Connecticut Carey, attorney Rachel Baird, and a company that I have, a very small company called American News and Information Services. That's ANUS for short. Um, It it really is, and there's a reason. I had a policeman say something to me one night, and I said, I'm going to rename my company. But I, I just want to say something. Connecticut in 2013 did not give the people in Connecticut an opportunity to present at a legislative hearing prior to they went emergency certification. Summary judgment is going to give the people in Connecticut, pro or con, the opportunity to have the public debate that the government never let us have. And I want to thank... uh, Cox Cable for for having public access and giving us the access to it, um, and I, I like I said, uh, sjtalkshow.com, and I'm I'm pumping this big time right now. But I was treated very well at the NRA. Uh, I have a lot of people that come up to me, and here's one for you. I have a lot of people come up to me in Connecticut, either through Rachel Beard's office or as an individual, and ask me what do I do, and they tell me what they're doing. I'm going to tell you. There are people remodeling their homes so that their walls in the house are hollowed out so that they can hide their firearms. <laughs> so, it, no, I'm, I'm, dead seri- I'm dead serious, Bill. People have actually put firearms in the walls of their house so government can't find them. That's the fear that's around here. Well, going along with that uh, train of thought, what are we? What, what's happening with the government? What's happening with your, with your very? Are they? What's? Where, what are they? What? What? How are they mustering up on this? They're not. We've They're had just some people it. that have cho- We we have had some people who have chosen not to seek re-election in November. 
some prominent politicians who were pro uh, legislation to ban that have chosen not to run. Um, today is May 1st. Our legislative session ends on May 7th, which means that it's not going to be amended or repealed. The laws are not going to be a- amended or uh, repealed, which means that from May 7th or this day forward until the end of the next legislative session, you know, the people who are considered criminals because they didn't register their firearms are going to be looking over their shoulder or maybe they don't look over their shoulder. So I'm going to give a shout-out to the Democrat, Governor Daniel Daniel Malloy, his Undersecretary of Criminal Justice, Mike Lawler, the Commissioner of the Department of Environmental Services and Public Protection, that's the state police, uh, the people in the firearms unit and the PIO for state police. I'm coming. I'm going to, I'm going to start, I'm going to be fire and brimstone on television and I'm going to take what people, and there's a, there's an email address. It's info at sjtalkshow.com. And I have to concentrate right now on the issues in Connecticut, but I, I mean, I'll answer Cal- California questions or if I can. And then you have to understand this. We're going to have to come up with some kind of a brick wall that comes that pops up because Rachel Baird is an attorney. She's mm-hmm. got ethics. She's She can't say certain things. She can't go after certain people in judicial for fear of grievances. So, you know, I'm going to come up with a ping-pong paddle and hand it to her or some kind of sign that she can put up when I'm talking and say, I got nothing to do with this. But... Um, I am going to be fire and brimstone. <laughs> oh no! I, oh no! You, you really? I'm, I'm. I'll do anything to get my point across. And I, do, we do our homework. Um, I have asked, and the, what I sent you today was an email request that I sent out this morning to the state police, and I said, I want your computer database of every firearm that has been surrendered destroyed, transferred, or seized, okay, since January 1st. Now, the state police have been stonewalling FOI requests from me or Attorney Baird regarding firearms. They're stonewalling. Well, when I go on TV every Saturday night, I'm going to say, okay, this is what I asked them for. (laughs) Here's their response. (laughs) Here's what I asked them for. Nope. And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to send out a very nice, going to look like a wedding invitation to the governor asking him to come on the show and these other people to come on the show. And when they don't come on the show, when I start every show, I'm going to say, okay, here's the invitation that was sent to the governor. He's not here. Here's to Mike Mike Lawler. He's not here. And now because they're not here, here's who we're going to have on the show. And I'm going to bring in the candidates that are running against Malloy. I'll bring in, because there's going to be no other Democrat. But I'm going to bring him in, and I'm going to give him an opportunity to talk. And it's on the Internet. We have the technology today that anybody in Borneo with an Internet access and a laptop is going to be able to watch it. I just don't know if I'll be able to understand their language. But um, I, I, you and Larry Pratt and the rest of the guys, and I had done this in the past, and I said, you know, i got to get back into this. I got to get back into this because I'm not your normal talking head like you see on television and the mainstream media. I have a segment of the show called My Editorial Reply to Your Editorial. <laughs> you know, and, and, and I'll tell you something. I'm, I can't do it with Rachel sitting next to me, but I'm the kind of guy, I'm not even going to swear, but, you know, I said, you know, you're an effing a-hole, you know, and I, I, I go, it's a cable wire, not a broadcast. So mm. I can do that. Yeah, but I'm yeah. just I'm just saying to you, Bill, it's people like you who give people like me an opportunity to talk and be heard by other people. People that think that they're the only person that has the problem or is this a unique situation? No, it's a pattern. All right, Ed. I want you to calm down and breathe deeply because we're going into break again. I want you to get regain control of that breath. Because I'm going to let you spout some more when we get back. On a Thursday, this is Lock and Load. Hey, 
Hey, gun grabbers, do you feel the pain? Welcome back on a Thursday. This is Lock and Load. The number to get in, 1-800-313-9443. My guest this hour, Ed Peruta. Uh, Ed, I want to point something out to you that you probably already figured out. Now, Ed has a background in media. When, When I bring a guest on like Ed, I can't do what he's, I can't encapsulate what he's doing and what he's facing. And he's facing it on two fronts. But primarily right now his focus is in Connecticut, which, you know, is a, could be a bad situation in Connecticut. I can't encapsulate that into a nine minute segment. And that's why when I bring a guest on like Ed, I got to give him the time because we got to map this out. Because the more you know, the more you know. We need to be paying attention to what's going on in Connecticut, just like New Jersey yesterday. And, uh, we need to, uh, continue to pay attention because they, those guys want to expand those laws beyond their state borders. And, you know, if we can beat them down and tamp them down and assist Ed and uh, everybody else in their venture, then we, we're, we're good to go as a federal entity. But um, I just want to get that out of the way because you had pointed out that you got a lot of people that want to get in there and they see you like a comet going across the sky. Oh, this guy's making news. Let's have him on for eight minutes. No, that's not the way it is. No, no, no. Let, and, and, you know, first of all, during the break, I heard Larry Pratt about Gun Owners of America. I couldn't agree more. You know, support every gun organization that's doing a good job, and they're doing a good job. And I'm not going to leave out the NRA because the reason I can concentrate a lot here in Connecticut is I've got a good legal team working for me in California. But I need to tell you something. Connecticut Carry hosted a lunch with members of the New Jersey group and members of the New York group. We all got together at a restaurant. Uh, Connecticut Carey picked up the tab, and we all had a discussion. And I had brought up at that meeting, you know, the possibility of using public access, public service announcements on your cable companies and doing stuff like that. But I just want to assure everybody that, if they go to that web address, sjtalkshow.com, there's going to be stuff coming out of Connecticut. And you're right. They test it here. They, they prototype it here. And then people out all over the country see what Connecticut's doing, and the antis start picking up on it and make it into a campaign. Well, and what, they did, what they did, Ed, is straight out of Atlas Shrugged. They took a group of people that one day were just regular law-abiding people and turned them into felons. How's that a work? How's that a win? Well, you know, I, I, I obviously had my notes, so let me just read something and see if you can agree. And I'm going to start out with this. I'm telling everyone, and on my show I'm going to tell everybody, you have to remember the number 1245. It's never just Second Amendment. It's First Amendment, Second Amendment, Fourth Amendment, Fifth Amendment, when they're knocking at your door. You have to remember 1245. And based on my experience, and it's not that long that I've been doing this, I have broke it down and said the various type of firearm owners in Connecticut uh, have often had difference of, differences of opinions. Basically, I identified five groups, Bill. The hunters, the recreational and competitive shooters, people who inherit, collect, and invest in firearms, people who have firearms strictly for self-defense, and then you got group number five, the criminals. And when you pass legislation like they did here in Connecticut or they want to do in other states or they have in New Jersey and they have in New York, you're regulating the first four, but you're not even touching the criminals. That's what pisses me off, is they, they, you know, the wrong people. Well, you know, one one of the things that I want to do, and I would love to do it in Connecticut. I mean, if I could ever get up there, I'd do it there. I I would like to go to them, and any of these that get out there and say, we're anti-gun violence, and look at them and say, well, you know what? I'm anti-violence, too. But you know what the problem here 
is that we're not talking about violence where the violence is happening. So here, let's do this. I have a carry permit so I can carry a gun. I'll carry your soapbox. Let's go to where the violence is. Yeah. Because they need to be addressing the criminal <laughs> or whatever drives them to commit crime or whatever. And like you said, they are uh they're not well, exactly uh let, let me let me give you let me give you a perfect example of the type of topic we're gonna talk about because it doesn't involve guns but it does. The the Connecticut legislature got in the, got their five minutes of press time above the fold by saying they were going to enact legislation about this knockout game where you walk up and you knock somebody out on the sidewalk, you know, some unsuspecting person out on the sidewalk. Attorney Baird was sitting in the car next to me when she was reading it in the paper, and she says, oh, she said, my first topic. Now, Rachel Baird used to be a prosecutor in the state of Connecticut. She goes, why do you need to enact a new law and call it the knockout law when you've already got laws called Assault 1, Assault 2, and Assault 3? All you have to do is take your existing laws, enforce those laws, don't give them any deals in the courthouse, put their ass behind bars, and let them sit there. The bad guys. But why are you coming after the good guys? Well, if they did it in Connecticut, wouldn't they have to let all the bad guys out of jail to make room for the new good guys that became felons? Well, yeah, and I, and I have to tell you, you know, the 800-pound gorilla in the room, Bill, is mental health. And the, it, when I was on that Connecticut Public Television NPR panel, I said it way back in December of 12. I said, you know, you're going to have to deal with mental health. And when the legislature and the taxpayers see the bills attached to it, okay, they're going to get weak in the knees. And they'll go after the easy stuff. You know, oh, these are honest, law-abiding citizens that own firearms. If we put new fees and permits and registration fees and we can raise money and, you know, regulate that, we'll make everybody happy because they see that we did something politically. But you know something? You didn't address the problem. You didn't address the problem. And I'm going to – I've got a list of everybody that voted to restrict my Second Amendment rights. I'm going to make sure that they get called out. I'm going to do shout-outs. I'll pick a couple of them every show and do a shout-out to them. And then I'll tell them what I think of them. Because you know, the I'm, I'm not a Democrat anymore, Bill. <laughs> the only problem with this, Ed, is I don't know how I'm going to be able to watch this show. Can you well, get it on Hulu? Be, no, no, listen to me. This Weathersfield Community TV has to deal with AT&T for streaming. And not only does it go out live real time, but then they put it into a bank and it's on demand on their website so you can watch it some other time. Oh. And all I'm trying to do is get the message out that this show is coming. Now, granted, you know, I don't live in Texas. I don't live in Tennessee. I don't live in Illinois. But you're going to be able to watch it live. This is what I'm being told. And you're going to be able to watch it not just live, but you'll be able to watch it after it's done. I've been counseled by my attorneys not to do anything crazy that the opposing side is going to be able to use against me. Mm. But you know something? You gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta say what you gotta say, and you have to let people know that things are happening. And I will tell you, when clients, new clients come into the office for the initial consultation, as the investigator, I sit inside that meeting. Attorney client privilege exists in the room. But I tell everyone, because they see the plate on my card that says CT.news, and they go, who's the news guy? I said, I am. And I said, look, you need to be always considering the fact of telling your story. Because when we sit there, Bill, we collectively, Rachel Baird and I, Attorney Baird and myself, sit there, we say, I can't believe this happened. But usually people that are honest, that get involved in law enforcement for the first time, oh, I don't want anybody to know about this. I don't want my name in the newspaper. Well, after they spend 18 months going back to court time and time and time again, they get pissed off and they say, can we get the media involved in this? <laughs> so, no, no, really, because we have a list of names of clients that have given us authority to tell their story. Obviously, we're going to try and leave the names out of it, but we're going to tell, we're not going to say, what if? We're not going to deal in hypotheticals. We're going to say, this did happen. 
And we'll tell you the town it happened in. We'll tell you the officers involved. And i got to tell you something else. Have you ever heard of a Brady list? This Brady is a list? Scoop. No, no. And I thought it had something to do with guns, right? Well, Go before you start Brady on that, list. we're coming up on the last break, okay? BradyList.org. And I'll okay. explain it when we come back. There you go. We're going to talk about the BradyList.org when we get back. Connecticut Carry, last time uh, Ed was on the show, you guys took care of him. And uh, Ed, Ed knows how to place his shots. So take care of him again. Go check him out there. 501C. It is tax deductible. We'll be right back on a Thursday. Feel free. Get ready to go away and wrap this one up on a Thursday. This is Lock and Load. The number to get in, 1-800-313-9443. Joining me this hour is, well, let's see. Let's, let's count down his qualifications. Number one, he is raising Sam in Connecticut with Connecticut Carry. Number two, he's raising Sam in California with his uh, landmark decision that came down from the Ninth Circuit. And number three, he's the newest member of Gun Owners of America. We're joined again by Ed Peruta. Uh, tell us about the Brady List. What is the Brady List? The BradyList.org is based on a Supreme Court decision, Brady versus Maryland, I think 1963. Now, you know, I'm 65 years old, and I just learned about this. Now I'm going to tell you a story without some names. End of December 2011, man has a pissing contest with his wife and his 15-year-old daughter. He didn't know at the time that his 15-year-old daughter, who was being homeschooled by his wife, was pregnant. But he had a pissing contest with his wife and daughter. Well, he got arrested. There was no guns used, no guns shown, nothing, nothing. And there was a Connecticut state trooper named Jay Bergeron, Jay, Jay Sevron Bergeron who arrested him, who went into the house, who took his 91 firearms out of the house and took him to the state police barracks. So, okay, so he's arrested, he's thrown in jail, he's on a high bond, he spends about, I don't know, a week, two weeks waiting to get out. Now, Rachel Baird represents him. They go to court, they go to court, they go to court, they go to court, they go to court. A year they want to destroy the weapons, we got to keep the weapons from being destroyed, and I'm talking fast because i got a little, i got to get through this. So he's scheduled to go to trial, Bill. They're going to pick a jury in March of 2014, and the day before they pick the jury, the prosecutor says, will your client take a deal? Well, what's going on? You said no deals. He's going to trial. Well, we've got a problem with the officer. What's the problem with the officer? Well, he's no longer a state trooper. Well, why is he not a state trooper? Or why won't, why do you, what's the problem? He says, well, if you call him to testify, he's going to have to plead the Fifth Amendment. What do you mean he's going to have to plead the Fifth Amendment? Well, it appears that he falsified 300 tickets, he falsified reports, and he got caught, and there was some other stuff. Well, why didn't they disclose it to us back on February 1st of 2013 when he was put out on suspension? Why didn't they tell us on uh, November 16th, his last day of employment, he was allowed to resign, and why in the exiting documents does, he say, does it say he left the state police in good standing? Why is it that local police officers in the state of Connecticut have to be certified, and if you do something wrong, you lose your certification, but state troopers don't have to be certified? So there's no reference to it. Oh, no. No, no, no. J. Severon Bergeron was a state trooper, and I've gone in FOI to all the information, but the Brady list says if a cop, if a police officer has problems with credibility, documented problems with his credibility or activities that, that show him in a bad light, they have to have a list. And then the prosecutor has to supply that information to the defense attorney, exculpatory information, immediately so that you can challenge the credibility officer. And Rachel's client was saying from day one, These statements and these reports, that's not what happened. These are not true. And then all of a sudden, on the eve of a trial, we find out that the cop's a liar and he should have been on a Brady list. Rachel writes a letter to the chief state's attorney for Connecticut saying, give me all of your policies and procedures about maintaining a Brady list. Oh, well, we don't have one. We're contemplating it. 
Well, that's going to be a topic of summary judgment. <laughs> and we found out about it by talking to a lawyer out at the NRA convention who said that in Washington, D.C., the list is so long of officers that have done, committed m misconduct. What about good moral character to carry a gun? I don't support bad law enforcement. I support good law enforcement. So, How many of those yeah, do you suppose got people. out or got to retire and gets to keep that uh – federal, that, that, that U.S.-wide exemption where they can carry a gun no, he, anywhere he they did, want to. He did, he did not have enough time to retire. He was a trooper for about three or four years. So he didn't Well, I'm not talking time, about Severon or Bergeron. I'm talking about down in the, the, the big list Washington, that you just mentioned. DC. Yeah. Right. But, I, I mean, I, you know, there is, there is something. Now, maybe the state of Connecticut calls it something else. But if you go to BradyList.org, You'll, you'll begin to see the information on it, or you Google Brady List. Now, when, you know, you can imagine when I hear Brady List, anything with Brady on it, I go, oh, yeah, here we go, the <laughs> antis. Well, no, this has nothing to do with them, but the Brady List is, is a list of bad police officers. I'm going to have to look at so that. So there's a scoop for you. Are they, do, they, do they have them arranged by state? No, and... All I can tell you is we're not done with this issue here in Connecticut because if we find somebody on the Brady list who's carrying a firearm on his job, we're going to start making the issue, at least editorially, well, wait a minute. If we do something wrong, we can't have one. If he did something wrong and you investigated and found it and suspended him and did whatever, why is he carrying one? BradyList.org, Bill. Yeah, you know, just, I'm, I'm just, looking at it right now, and I only see one for Maricopa County, Broward County, Florida, and yeah, Linton, but, Washington. Yeah, I mean, I, it's if they're going to have a national gun registry, they need to have a national Brady list. <laughs> Pit for tap. There you go, I like it. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. I like it. And I'm... And I'm glad that I at least was able to tell your viewers that. Now, I need, to, I need to make my pitch. Please, if you're listening to Lock and Load Radio and Bill Frady, please consider a couple of extra dollars for Connecticut Carry. Um, we use the money wisely. We have a totally transparent what we do with the money. Um, we've put some money out to, to put this show together to get it on. But we are in a fight here in Connecticut. And I would appreciate any financial support from any place in the United oh, in the world, for that matter. I'm sure that somebody over there in uh, the Ukraine will probably be sending us some money. <laughs> Bill, I don't know how to thank you and and the people that do this nationally for giving me an opportunity to vent. I mean, when I do when I do television shows, it's like a therapy session; it gets it all out. But I also know that when a judge makes a snotty remark to me in court. I'm now going to be in, be able to answer him in kind from my court, and my nice. court's going to be the public access studio. Yeah, I'm going to have to. I, you need to keep me in the loop on that. I want to see that when that goes on. Will you? Will it be one of those well, shows I, where you can take phone calls? Yes. Ah. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> no five second delay, so everybody's got to. But you know, the seven dirty words are okay on cable. But I don't. You know, we're trying not to get the crack. Uh, you know, I try to remain family friendly. I'm doing it for the children. Well, I'm, fam I'm family friendly too, but you know, sometimes people get you a little bit under the, you know, you, you're out of your seat. But all I can tell you is if you go to uh, sjtalkshow.com, you'll see the set desk that we had built and the sign that I put up there yesterday. And we're going to try and do as good a show as we can on the budget that we've got. But uh, I'm going to be talking to the people here in Connecticut, and I know from past experience, um, I had a judge throw me out of a courtroom about oh, 15 years ago, and as I was walking out, the two marshals grabbed my arms, and I turned around in court, and it was, the place was full. I said, don't you put your freaking hands on me. He told me to leave. I'm leaving. Don't you touch me. So as I was going out, the judge said something, and I turned around to him, and I said, Your Honor, your court, your rules. Tonight I'm on TV, my court, my rules. You'll hear about it. Well, then the marshals who live out in the towns went into the court on Monday and said what happened. 
and I get a telephone call saying, you got to come over and apologize to the judge. Well, I apologize to him on the next show in my way. You know, I'm not apologizing to a judge that acts like a fool. Did he have oh, a ring yeah. that you were supposed to kiss, too? Did you, did you have to call him Don something? No. But, but oh, okay. And, and listen, all I can tell you is this, is Rachel, Attorney Beard, is somewhat nervous because she knows what I'm capable of. I mean, we walk into courthouses, and the marshal says, Ed, are you still on TV? And I'll, I've been saying no for, like, five years. Well, now I walk in and said, okay, I'm back on. And they said, what channel? So... Keep me I in hear the, the loop. Music. We'll put out. We'll put it out as soon as that happens. Thank you very much for joining me today. Listen, Bill. Anytime, any day. Roger that. You stay safe. Keep fighting. All right, folks. That is a wrap. And we're going to do this one more time this week. Twenty-one hours from now. Between now and then, remember this: it's never been about gun control ever, ever. It's always been. It's always going to be about total control. On a Thursday. This has been Lock and Load.